This week, all I've heard about Stellar Blade has been all the controversy surrounding this game. We got one YouTuber, Grums, who blew up with an online petition to bring back the original, sexier, Stellar Blade, and he got lambasted for it by some internet trolls, as if the internet didn't have enough of those already. I actually sat down to play Stellar Blade this week, and you can check out my live stream of the gameplay. Was it worth all the controversy? And is the game any good? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that is modern gaming. Setting aside all the controversy, I sat down to play Stellar Blade this week to see what the fuss was all about, and I found myself a little perplexed. Gamers are going apeshit over a game that's not really that great. My initial thoughts were that this was a generic action hack and slash game. The gameplay and level design itself kind of reminded me of the Knack franchise back on the PS4. Take out a bunch of enemies, collect their little trinkets, check out an area for clues, and then rinse and repeat. The skill tree itself is pretty much a carbon copy of the skill trees in Spider-Man and Ghost of Tsushima on PS4. They even copied it right down to the perfect dodge skill. Now, as far as the characters and character design are concerned, I actually surprisingly found them to be pretty damn realistic and human looking. Don't forget, I live in New York City where women like this are plentiful. Just take a walk around the West Village or the Meatpacking District on a Saturday night and you'll see dozens, if not hundreds, of chicks that look like Eve. As I mentioned on my Cover Plays stream, Stellar Blade's Eve seems to be in between 5'8 and 5'11, and her proportions are pretty damn realistic. She's leggy, even though some tall chicks can have a long torso and be disproportionate. She's got a pretty accurate ass and hips, and she's not overly thin like old school Tomb Raider Miss Lara Croft. So I'm not sure what the issue is here. She looks pretty damn good to me. The developers covering up her chest was entirely unnecessary because she doesn't have bouncy volleyballs for boobs like in Dead or Alive back in the day. Making her wardrobe more conservative was pretty pointless because her chest size is fairly average for a woman of her stature. I'll even admit that she's about the same size and composition as Katie Holmes, who I personally saw once walking down Madison Avenue with Surrey. But I digress. The point is that covering up Stellar Blade's Eve was an unforced error on Sony and Shift Up. Or was it? Alright, given that I think this game is as generic as they come, I have a feeling something strains a foot at the Circle K with this one. The game itself provides nothing new or innovative as far as I can tell in my initial hour of gameplay. So perhaps Sony and Shift Up knew this and wanted to drum up controversy in order to sell more games. But as my pal the Angry Badger mentioned on his channel, Sony allegedly providing refunds for Stellar Blade is a little sus and may throw a wrench into my theory that Sony knew what it was doing. Who really knows? But where do we go from here? The free Stellar Blade petition has already passed 66,000 signatures. My guess would be if fans and gamers all flood Sony for refunds, Sony may cave and release the original unpatched game. But then they'd be stuck with a generic action slasher that's just a bit sexier. I don't know. This might be where I differ with everyone and say that this has gotten way overblown. I can see the false advertisement argument that Sony promised one thing and delivered another, but in the business's defense, it's their product. They can do whatever they want with it, but it's up to consumers to vote with their wallets. I'd be curious to know what the initial sales figures were in the first week. My guess is that gamers still played it just to hate on it. Kind of like seeing The Last Jedi for fun just so you can shit on it later. Gaming controversies are nothing new in the industry. There's been plenty over the years. But it seems that with the advent of the dark age of cinema and its invasion of woke ideology, controversies in gaming have really accelerated in the last few years. Everyone remembers The Last of Us Part 2 and how it gaslit gamers. This is no different. Gamers expected one thing and got something else. It seems to be par for the course in modern gaming. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think this is all just a big nothing burger? Or is the controversy legitimate? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.